Listen only mode. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Admiral Market Session Recap of 24 of February 2014. My name is Nenad, and I will show you today five possible setups. So you need to pay attention on these levels, and possibly we will have uh, many, many pips. Uh, hello, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your comments, and uh, thank you for uh, support, of course. This isn't a, an easy job for me to analyze every day, especially on Mondays, but so far it was, it was, it's been very, very good. And today I will show you Euro, Dollar, Cable, Aussie, then uh, GBP and so-called Dragon and GBP Cat. And now possibly you will ask me why don't I only trade uh, uh, Euro, Dollar, Cable and Majors. Guys, because it's, it's very simple. Forex is made of many, many, many different pairs. And I had some problems, I need to tell you, with this, this uh, new build. It's, uh, it's build 610 and some of my uh, expert advisors and other stuff that I use don't work here and now I will need to get some coder to do business for me. And I don't know, is this the right step? Uh, probably we will see that this new build so if you if you also have this build and all builds after 600 you might have some problems with your expert advisors with all the indicators you should know that you should you should uh, pay attention to fortunately enough for you probably Admiral Markets hasn't done automatic update yet but if it happens you need to be prepared because this build is completely different 610 and 600 build probably you have a 509 build but if you happen to have this build after 600 you need to know that programming language has been changed completely completely so many of your all indicators and expert advisors will not work uh, probably you are still at 509 but you don't need to update if if you don't need to I needed to update because my MetaTrader 4 suddenly stopped working and I needed to reinstall the, the, the complete platform. But when I, when I saw it, I knew and, uh, that I would have some problems. And, well, some of all indicators do not work now and some of expert advisors do not work. Some, not everything. Uh, yeah, there is no problem. And I am just not sure why they did update. Uh, from some things that I heard, uh, that is probably that they wanted to protect uh, new sellers, because you will probably notice here that you can see there is also a market, and if you if you see custom indicators and so on, you can see some of those indicators are marked, some are not. So basically, uh, they're possibly they want to protect uh, sellers of these indicators, because you know that there are many many cracked uh, indicators that have been so far and probably they want to protect it so they they change uh, programming language also the structure has completely changed if you see open data folder here you can see configuration experts history it's now MQL4 it's it's completely different language so some of your yeah Camarilla works and many of my old indicators work including expert advisor for uh, divergences and other things, but some of them just don't work. I also use trailing stop uh, expert advisor, which worked perfectly, and that expert advisor also gave me signals because, you know, I trade all of these pairs. You see, from euro, dollar, not, uh, not bullion market. I don't trade silver and gold. But all the way down to, to New Zealand yen, I trade almost 23, 24 pairs. And it's very hard for me sometimes when I have all of those setups, I need to have signals. So when the price, I don't trade, uh, you know that I trade price. So if the price, let's say, touches this level, I want to have a signal that that level has been touched. I don't want to see a clo close of the candle or something else. I, I want to see the price. So if the price touches, especially this trend line, I... I can say I want to see a signal popping up out of MetaTrader 4. And now that tra expert advisor which I had 
unfortunately doesn't work. So I need to recode it. Not me, but I will find a coder who will probably do that. So I just wanted to, to, to tell you that if you experience those problems, you need to be aware. Uh, your indicators are probably okay, but that is the problem and common problem with build. So that is, uh, after 600, this is the second update after 600, a complete programming lang language has been changed. So just, just to let you know. And now, if you ask me why do I do analysis, I will always give you Euro Dollar Cable Aussie, but I will also include GBP Japanese and GBP CAD and any, possibly any of those pairs. Because it's simple, it's simple. You don't trade $97 systems because they cannot give you a correct, correct analysis for all other pairs. Usually when you buy something from internet, they, it, they will tell you, okay, it will work for Euro dollar cable, I don't know, Australian dollar, for three pairs. But why would you trade three pairs if you can trade 23 pairs, right? It's better to trade 23 than two or three pairs. Year, year and a half ago, I traded most of Euro dollar cable, Aussie sometimes, and uh, dollar yen. But when I, from the inception of Camarilla MACD, I'm really, I'm really, I'm happy because now it's it's very easy for me to trade and analyze all of these setups for you. So every single pair in Forex market is perfectly tradable and it's not hard. It, it I mean, it's, it doesn't have much difference if you trade Euro dollar or GBP Australian dollar or I don't know, G, Swissy Japanese yen. It's, it's basically it's all the same. So that is why I will keep you updating on also on other pairs. Today, need a, to tell you a quick uh, resume. You can see Euro dollar. Many, many people thought that it will fall down, but I told you this is POC1, this is POC. In both cases, Euro will jump. If it dropped here, probably we would see a retest of 37.20, and I don't know what would happen. But starting from here, this level, something around there, it went. Now it's, it's almost. 40, 45 pip, 35 pips above the entry. So basically, it's simple. Dead analysis and also paying attention to Australian dollar, Japanese yen, you see possible W pattern. So this pattern is still valid. Pay attention to it. POC is point of confluence. I use that always in my Camarilla MACD and analysis always. POC means that there is a confluence on Fibonacci point Camarilla level and a trend line, or two swings of Fibonacci major and minor swing, and possibly another another confirmation in the matter of a candlestick or a trend line. So POC means points of confluence, where you will have a, a good chance to place a trade. So this is how I determine my trade entries. I don't use uh, other indicators. I use price, so I don't want. I want to see price in this region, not candle close, or because I trade now living candle. So I want to see price in the region, and when the price hits a level, I trade it. So that is the, a little bit different from classical candlestick trading. It's price action trading. Yeah, POC is <laughs> magic. The, yeah, it's it's basically it's it's a sort of magic. So far, it, it's been very good. I, like let me knock uh, on the tree so it will surely I hope that it will continue to be so good so let's see what what we had a quick recap of last session quick recap of last session last session yielded us now last session yielded us yielded 235 pips now it doesn't mean that I have got all 235 pips I got something around 60 or 80 pips all of, all, of all of these trades but this is so-called pip potential. So all of these trades have been very, very successful. And that means that we had 235 pip potential. So some of you may have got, I don't know, 100, 150. Some of you may got 5, 10, 25 pips. Uh, maximum what you could have got of these trades was 235 pip potential. All of these trades got... Uh, 
well, it was, we were fortunate enough that the the targets were hit. And let's see, euro dollar. Oh, this is sorry. This is for today. Now let's see what was the last week. So euro dollar, it was thirty six eighty five seventy buy. Now you always need to have a price, the room to breathe. So if if I say, if I put it like this, try to have a plus minus ten pip difference. So if let's say if your entry should have been at thirty six eighty five with zero point five lots, you can add zero point two at thirty six ninety five for zero point one at thirty six ninety five and wait for this price to happen. If it hits it, you can add zero point four more. So you will have total of zero point five. So that is how I usually manage the trade. If I get the correct price, I can enter a full lot size. So let's say that my full lot size is 0 0.5. If I get this price, I will enter with 0 0.5. If I see the price is struggling to break 36.95, 36.90, I can add 0 0.2 and wait. If it goes up, OK, I will have only 0 0.2 lots tradable. If it happens to hit this level, then I will add 0 0.2 or 0 0.3. So this is how I usually do it. So basically what, what happened is the price is the price went here. This was the time of our webinar and the price went here. It was 36, uh, 94, 95, something around that level and it proceeded just to perfectly. It was to 37.70. Well, basically it was very, very good P potential from here. Then on GBP, what we got is basically on GBP, we also had a nice trade, but Australian dollar was winner uh, for that week. GBP also buy around 66, 65, targeting 68, or sell around 68, 50. And what happened was basically what happened, we will see. This was the time of, of our webinar, so the price went to this level. You see, it was basically early London open. You see the price went after our webinar to this level. It was only, I don't know, some 18 pips in drawdown. And then it didn't hit 68, but it went straight to 67.40. Uh, then uh, what we got on Aussie, it was great trade by around 90.15, 35 pips of targeting 90.80. This was the trade of the week because what we got is the perfect entry. This was the time of our webinar, if you can see. This was the time of our webinar. And uh, at 3 o'clock, basically, when Asia opened, well, that, that is basically the best time to trade this currency pair. You can see what happened. What happened, the price has hit this level to the pip. Look at this, to the pip. And then it went up straight to the target. So this was the trade of the week. So it's very, very good. Straight to 90.80. I, I, I say it rarely happens, but it really happens from time to time. Look at this. 90.50 and look at this 90.80. So basically, this is re really, this rarely happens, but it, it was the trade of the week. Perfect. To the pip. Entry to the pip and target price to the pip. Well, that that is, well, it's rare, but it happens. That it, It's everything to the pip. Now Euro Yen, Euro Yen, what we got on Euro Yen, basically we had a successful breakout pullback continuation this this level and it was basically it went above this level but the target has been hit. So Euro Yen, Euro Yen, Euro Yen, after the after the our webinar you see the price break through it now. If you zoom here into lower time frame you will see breakout retest continuation. Look at see, look at this, look at this straight to the target uh, and what we had on I think it, yeah it was a dollar yen dollar yen sell around 140 120 I received many questions concerning dollar yen and what happened basically we had great entries on dollar yen first it was I, I said pay attention to this level this was the time of our webinar and a couple of hours later again dollar yen in Asia session look at this almost to the pip, it was 18, and look at this, straight down 40 pips. And then again, basically what happened is the price, the price, <clears throat> the price went uh, to 140 later. 
240, look at this. Yeah, it was a little bit of buying after this sell-off, but you can see here, basically, it was 33 pips in a drawdown, but if you go for bigger pullbacks, even if you got in here and you miss this trade, look at this. Great, just great. So, total it was total pip, total pip what we could have got, total pip number, but pip potential was 235 pips. Fortunately enough, not a single losing trade here, but we will see. Uh, should we put pending orders? I don't like to put pending orders. I like always to, I want to see what I do. I use that uh, trade, uh, how can I say, trade manager program, and he gives me, he gives me basically the, the price. So when, when the price is hit, so let's say that how I do it usually, uh, how I do it is basically what I do is I wait for the price to come at this level. When it's 10 pips from this level, I get a signal from that uh, expert advisor to enter the trade, okay? And I'm watching the trade. So that is why I don't put pending orders. Sometimes when I'm in the trade, I put pending orders. But usually I want to see the price behavior around that level. If I see direct drop like this, I probably won't trade this. But if I see a gradual grinding down to this price, then I can, I'm can i able to see a, a probable entry and then I enter by market order. So if you want to put panic or, I don't know, go with lower, lower, uh, how can I say it's it's a lower leverage, yeah, lower leverage, don't go with full. But if you ask me, I always want to see the price behavior because this is what I do is an analysis. This is prediction of the price. And when you want to trade the price, you want to react. And that was always my favorite quote, not prediction, reaction. And it's, it's, it's very true because... I, I do predictions by this analysis, and if it happens, it's, it's perfect. But I want to see price action around levels I predict, I analyze. And if I see that the price action is very correct, if I see, if I see basically uh, a slow grinding to the price, then I can enter the market. So I always want to see the price in accordance to my analysis, and if I see that it's, it's been it's been perfectly fine, I will, I will basically go into the market. So, first is prediction, this is prediction, analysis, and the second thing is reaction, because the reaction is it's when you click the button and you enter market order. Yeah, and panic order sometimes can be very, very nasty, especially if you have uh, news or something like that pending, so it, it can be really bad because sometimes the news can spike your stop loss and then go into your trade direction. I usually go, when I, when I see the news, I usually wait for the price to, let's say, to spike and if it's accordance to my analysis, I can get a better price. So if I plan to have a entry, long entry here and I see that there is uh, one hour or half an hour till news and let's say that news bring me here. I would enter the market because it's still in accordance to my analysis. But I didn't enter here just because I wanted to see a new spike. But very often, this analysis goes very well with news. So, let's see what I have today. This analysis, of course, is valid. <clears throat> yeah, uh, also there are trades that can be executed during the night. You can try. So if you if you want to try it, go try it. But uh, remember, you always use uh, low leverage. Don't go with big leverage. So try to see how it goes with pending orders, but use low leverage. If you if you go to sleep, of course, in early Asia, because if you if you trade London, it's hard to to be uh, it's hard not to sleep in Asia session. So try try to see what will happen. But as I say, go with, with low leverage. Now, what about euro dollar? Euro dollar is in uptrend. It's very clear. It's uptrend. It's zigzag pattern. Now, what I see is, is the same basically for today. I can see that we can buy around 37 to 37.20 stops around 36.85 targeting 
3780 and 3895. This is what I currently see on Euro dollar. And if the price hits 3785, we can go for a scalp swing trade because usually the price will react to this level. Let me find it. The price will usually react to, to this level because it's 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 important level 3785. It's important if you go in the history. You can see that 3785 is indeed important level, and basically the price will probably be struggling to break this level. So let's see what will happen first. Uh, what will happen first? It's it's not up to us. It's up to market. So any of these setups could be played out, probably. And yeah, I forgot about very important level, a very important thing, guys. Risk disclaimer, please take into consideration before I continue with, with, with the webinar. Risk disclaimer, risk disclaimer, always important to have it. Always important to have it. Read this online educational materials are developed by Admiral Marquez Estonia for a global audience. Therefore, please take into consideration that, de that the information this session may not be suitable for everyone. To get a corresponding information on charting conditions and any other detail, please visit www.admiralmarketsglobal.com, select your country of residence and contact an appropriate entity. Then, risk disclosure statement which say, says everything and which is saying everything about risks associated with forex market. By accepting this risk disclosure statement, you are accepted to proceed further with me on to a webinar. And also, risk disclaimer saying that Admiral Marcus UK LTD takes no responsibility for the information accuracy. The analysis represents the personal opinion of the author, it's me, and in no way it represents the actual suggestion for the trade. These are not AM UK's opinions that the website and video is not .co.uk website, but the globalnews.com website. Forest is risky business and this should be taken as advice. And it's a personal opinion only. This webinar is used for informational and educational need to correct these purposes only. So this is it. As I said, Euro dollar, Euro dollar, this is it about Euro dollar. Zigzag, what I see is buy around this level, sell around this level. Now cable. Cable is in correctional downtrend and making a possible bullish wedge. Now what does it mean? Uh, if you see cable is really is going up, 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 up. If you see this from this level, it is straight up. Uh, now it's this is correctional downtrend, and what I can say is basically, we can see that this level 60.65 was great for buying. Now it was good for selling, uh, and what I can say is basically. So if we want to sell it, if we want to sell it, so let's see. Oh yeah, this is cable. We can try to sell it again around 66, 65 to 75, targeting this level. But if I anywhere, anywhere uh, to 67.40, it's possible, possible sell. So pay attention to this level, to this level also, because this is look. This looks like it will go down, and I think it will go down to this level. Look at look at this. This is bullish wedge, and look where this bullish uh, wedge ends. If you take a look also one hour, it started, this is first swing, now we are in the second swing. And look at this, pay attention to these levels. We might have a short trade, again, straight to this level, 65.40. And around that level, we can also try to search for a buy trade. This is what I see on cable. So I can see at the moment, I can see a sell around this level. But probably, if it if bearish if bullish wedge happens, and indeed it it is it is it is a wedge. You can see this. It's not a triangle. This is a wedge, and a falling wedge is bullish wedge. Four hour, one hour. So where is an intersection of the important level and the wedge. It's here at this point. So you can see also the reactions around 65.40. Historical price action. You can see that the price is indeed being bought from this level, 65.40. So we can also try to search for a new surge of buyers here around this level. Because also historically it, it's proven to work. 
So it's also the end of this wedge, the pinnacle. So if we can see, if you see the price, it, it will be probably rejected again if it happens to come around 66.60. But it has a room to this level, so be very careful. And then if it happens to get here, we can try to look for a buy, at least for a buy or a swing scalp trade. Now, I will make a special webinar explaining probably what are swings, what are swing scalps, what are scalps, and how to basically convert a scalp trade into a swing scalp or into or swing scalp into an intraday trade. But that's basically more about money management. So this is what I see on cable. At the moment, cable for me is bearish because it's in correctional downtrend. It needs a little bit of correction. And I think that it will go to this level, to this level, 65.40, 65.50. But all the way up to 67.40, it has a potential to go lower. Even though we can see that there is a resistance now. Why? Because 66.65 was a lever to buy into last week. You know, we got a lot of pips from this level. But that level has been broken, retested, and it proceeded to go down. So I guess it can still go down. And from in my opinion, it should hit this level before proceeding further up. Now, I may be wrong, but that is how I see it now. It should touch at least 6540 and then and then go to and then go up. So if I buy, I would like to see it around this level. And if I sell, I would sell around this level probably. But I would pay attention also to all the way up to this level because all the way up to this level it's bearish. It's cor it's correctional. Now we are trading intraday. So if it it is still uptrend, but it's correctional. You see now this is retracement. And this was this is the end of this wedge. And probable start of bullish wedge buy signal. Okay? And still around 6540, which is historical reaction place. There were historical bias here. Okay? Now, let's see next pair. Australian dollar. Uh, well, we have a W breakout pattern. We have W breakout pattern on Australian dollar. And this was, this was a mistake now head and shoulder because that was last week. So Australian dollar is in uptrend and it has W breakout pattern, famous W breakout. Look at this. Now what would I like to see? I would like to see a retest at one hour of this level, 9040. If not not this level, sorry, 9020. Because this is this is point two. One, two, three. So if you know if you know about this pattern, it's called W one two three pattern. This is breakout point here. So if we go for a trade, it will usually be like this: one two three breakout, pull back to two, and then continuation. One two three, two point two is the breakout. Then retest. So this is retest point. This is continuation point. Okay, and it usually it's. One, two, three, breakout, pullback, continuation, or breakout, retest, continuation. Okay, so what we have here, you can see it here. W, up, 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 you can see it. One, two, three, one, two, three. Look at this, breakout. Now, let's wait for the pullback and continuation. If it happens to continue, it should hit 90, 80. But it, it goes, currently it's in a sort of, re, in a sort of retracement. But I would like to see a retracement to this level for a possible breakout pullback continuation. Also, around this level, we could see a sell. 90.80. 90.80, guys. We can probably see a sell. This level. 90.80. So, around this level, if it happens on now on retracement, there is a probable buy trade. But if it happens to get here before giving us a buy trade, 
I would look to sell around this level, 90.80. Historical level again, and there is a probable there are probable sellers up there, okay? Sellers around this level. Look at this. Are there any sellers? Pay attention to history. Sellers around 980. Sellers around 980. Sellers around 980. Sellers around. No, not here. And now again, 980 sellers. At least it can give us a sell scalp trade around that level. Because there were a ton of sellers around 980. And look at this. This looks bullish. This looks bullish. Even on daily it looks bullish. And I would like to see a retest of this level breakout. Dragon or pound yen. It's in uptrend. Now, novice traders, if you if you trade GBPN guys, if you trade GBPN, go with low leverage. It's a very fast pair. And it's not recommended for traders who have low accounts. GBPN, I trade it and many traders do it, but be and pay attention. Pay attention because it can be very volatile. GBPN. I can see there is potential W breakout here. GBPN potential, look at this, W. Look at this W pattern. Now, according to that pattern, now we can buy around 170.20 or if 175 breaks, then on breakout continuation, we need to see a breakout continuation at 170.55. Okay? 174, and it happens. Look at this. While we are having a webinar, it happens, guys. This, at the time I was writing this analysis, the price was below 170.55. And uh, you see, it broke out. Unfortunately, I, I didn't. I told you, sometimes it will happen while we are having the webinar, the trade setup is having a look at this just basically I would like to see again a retest of this trade as this is inverted head and shoulders the price might get here or here and then go up so buy on retracement is also on GBP buy on red retracement it looks like that it looks like that and now if you see if you look on one hour time frame we can have a sell probable here because this is left this is head this is right shoulder but this is a failure of head and shoulders pattern here because this neckline hasn't been it it isn't it isn't proven it wasn't it good for uh, for a head and shoulder straight. You can see the deck line, it was very, very, very shallow movement below this 170, 20. So pay attention to 170, 50, 55, and uh, let's see if there will be some retest of this level. Now, also, this is point of confluence. 170.20, 61.8 swing, 61.8 minor swing, and also important level, and it is the neckline of head and shoulders pattern. So basically, it can happen that it it gets to there, and it also can be bought. So basically, what you should pay attention to these levels: 117, 170, 55. These two levels, 170.20 and 170.55. If it happens to get here, try to go. I would, I would like to see a potential scalp around that level. Okay. 
if it happens to see a retest of that level, we can have a small scalp for a small short scalp. Short scalp. But also, the target, according to these patterns, are, is 172.30. As I say, Dragon is very volatile. 172.30. Why? We look at this. Prior head and shoulders sell off of the right shoulder. And this looks like W also on 4 hour time frame. So if it happens to go there, I would also look for a sell. At the first touch, of course. At the first touch because it can give us a sell, probable, probable sell at the first touch. But as I see it for now, it looks bullish and it's been rejected of 170.20 and 170.55 breakout level. I can say 170.55 to 50. Also, as we have a FIB number there. So, it looks like it might go to this level prior to a short trade. And GBP cat, head and shoulders pattern, GBP cat, look at this. Look at this, GBP cat, head and shoulders, left, head, right. Neckline, trend line, the bottom of neckline. And what we can see on GBP cat is, we can try to sell at the retest of 84.40 targeting 83.50. 84.40, this is basically, look at this, 45. So, so, so it can be 40, 45. Targeting 83.50, 83.50. If it happens to come here, it will be a retest. And I would look to sell it. Probable sell around this level. It's close to it now. 40, 45. But if it happens to go below 84, this top zero, zero number. Now, if it happens to go straight down, you can go with breakout, pullback, continuation, targeting 83 then. So, watch for this level and this level. For me, at the moment, GBP cat looks like a sell. I don't see any buy opportunity here. I may be wrong, but this is how I see it. This is very big head and shoulders. Right, left, head, right. A retest probable here. And if it doesn't happen, if it goes straight below 84, then look at if it breaks 84.00, then go for a breakout pullback continuation. And probable target is 83.00. I need to recalculate these levels again. 83.00. Look, one, two, three, four. Look at, at reactions. So, if it goes below this level, breakout, pullback, continuation, probably there. If it happens to see, to, to get here, I would look for a sell to this level, and I would observe the reactions to that level. Uh, why didn't I connect a left shoulder? Because you can see it here. Uh, this is basically, if I do it like this, if I do it like this, what would you see here? You would see a, a history which has already been, uh, which, which already happened. Look at this. It has been broken, but this trend line is not valid anymore. We can delete this trend line. It's not valid anymore. This is, if you put it here, okay, doesn't matter. It's more valid. It's more valid if you connect this and this. Because it's still a neckline, but it's in a perfect confluence with this level. Look at this. Trend line, but also pay attention to this historical level. 84, 
let's say 87, 85, uh, 47, 45. So this is intersection point. And you get this intersection point by connecting these two peaks. If I did it like this, well, it still could have had importance. But this law is also important there. This law is also important there. Look at this. What do you see? This bottom and this bottom confluence. You could, you could put it like this. But I prefer it to see it like this. Because of this point and this point confluence. Now, let's don't make it... it it's... Uh, how can I say stacked with those lines because we won't see a good price action. You want to see it like this. Okay? You can see that price, if it happens to come here, it will probably make a retest and go, and then go down. And if you happen, if you happen to see it below this level, I would zoom into 15 minute time frame and try break out pull back continuation to this level 60 83 50 probably let's see yeah probably like this 83 50 and if it happens to get around this level, if it happens to swirl or swiggle around this level, probably that we can see a buy trade from here. But I wouldn't go into any buy trade at the moment because what I see, if it breaks this level, that means that this level won't be retested. It's so strong that it will probably hit 8300. 8300 will probably be hit if it doesn't retest this level and go straight down from this level. Okay? Now, I will go through these slides again and show you possible setups. This is for Euro Dollar. And also, don't forget about this. I'm still looking for a possible breakout of Aussie-N. I don't see where is the price on Aussie-N. Yeah, it broke out already. I, I missed the trade. I missed the trade, guys. Well, it's just because my laptop it, had, it has had some problems lately with Windows. I need to reinstall it. And uh, my second screen also is, is not working at the moment. And, you know, when you trade on only one screen and you, you have two big screens, then if one screen is, 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 how can I say, screwed, then it's hard to follow all of these pairs. And also it's because of this new build. Because it didn't give me a signal that this level has been broken. Now the price is 92.75, guys. And I, you see the analysis. It was here when I wrote the analysis. And unfortunately enough, I, I missed the trade. But I hope that some of you got into the trade. Well, it happens from time to time. Good 30, 30, 25, 30 pips are missed, unfortunately. Well, okay, look at the price, 92.70. Now, what I can say, if you didn't enter at this analysis, I'm not sure that I would enter it now because we we had a breakout of this level and the price has gone too far to the upside. So it, it's aiming for this level and now I'm not sure. If if it, if someone of you traded when... Well done, guys. Excellent. I have a... Oh, excellent. Who, who was... Dragon. 
I took Ozzy and at 92.45 looking for 92.80. Well done, Dragon. Well done. You see, I missed the trade, but I'm happy that you traded. Well done, Dragon. Well done, I, I need to say. So, excellent, excellent. Okay, let's see what we have in mind about cable. This is it about cable. This is about Aussie. This is about Dragon. And this is about GBP CAD. Now, as you all know, I post the analysis on Forex Factory and on Admiral Markets blog. And you will always see uh, early analysis in London or at the beginning of London. And uh, then again at the New York Open probably some, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes after the New York Open, I will post another analysis. So you always pay attention to Spiders then to, and, to for, and to Admiral Markets blog. And fortunately for you, I will be also, and for me, it's very hard. I, I hope that it's very hard. It's very easy, sorry, very easy. I need to... to Sorry, this is now the screen. Okay, this is it now. So it's very easy for you to follow on Spiders Den and, and uh, Admiral Markets. I try to do this analysis as simply as possible, giving you pre-fact and real-time analysis levels. So subscribe to this, follow this, so you will have real-time analysis. So. If you are clear with this all, if you don't have any questions, we can conclude the webinar. No thanks. <laughs> Daniel, Nana, thank you for this analysis. You are welcome. You are welcome. I am very happy to help you guys. If you have any, I'm a little bit nervous because I missed a very good trade today. So that is all because of this MT4 build. So again, if you see that some of your expert advisors don't work, well, it's not up to your uh, whoever gave you those expert advisors. And this this is, well, <laughs> yeah, Ante, you're right. Well, it's, it's usually it's, it's, it's about us, but this time it's about MT4 uh, updates. They trying to, to be as close to MT5 as they can get. And I can see that the price is uh, behaving uh, excellent in, in this uh, MT4 bill, I can say. Uh, we, we have instant executions, really very, very strong. But uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, the programming language has been changed, so many of those indicators will not work. Uh, I took your Marmet web very serious, new perspective, so I know what you're saying now. <laughs> thank you, Dragon, thank you. There will be also webinar about Marimet very soon. Don't forget to subscribe. We will have a new trading strategy with Marimet. I will show you. I will show you also Forex pairs correlation, obscure exotic crosses. Don't forget to sign in here. Also, Chris webinar, psychology trading, reversal trading, and of course, there will be Mario Math webinar. I think it's scheduled for next month. It's it should be scheduled for next month. We will see, or maybe in April. I don't know, but I will present you also a great trading strategy for Mario Math. Maybe it's in April. I know that I have planned it so. Pay attention to that. Okay. Yeah, price action trading party, new new price action trading strategy. 
it's uh, more advanced than first two, so pay attention to that. Where on Forex Factory I post my trade ideas? It's here. You go on forums and then you have trading discussion here. Trading discussion and it's Spiders then. If you go on replies, they have removed uh, visits, total number of visits from this part of the website and it was close to two million and seven seven hundred thousand visits. But you can find it here, it's easily. Spiders then it's called. If you click on spiders then then this is the last post so you can see that. Also real time analysis on my personal blog on, on Admiral Markets. It's tarantula fix, but it may soon be changed to Nenad Kerkes tarantula fix. My name and my nickname, my name and my share name, because it will be also shared on G Plus, Google Plus. Okay, here. This is the analysis. Everyday analysis. Every day, every day, every session, except for Asia session. Okay. So thank you very much guys for attending this nice webinar on Tags Admiral Markets for supporting you and me and all of these perfect nice webinars I sh I'm sharing with you and I will be here again with you with Chris and also with my personal webinars. Thank you very much for your attention and see you very very soon. Cheers.